Welcome to this ADF Insider session about ADF Phaser Skinning. My name is Frank Nymphius and I'm from the Oracle Application Development Tools Product Management Group. In this session, we want to explore skinning, a facility within ADF Phasers that allows developers to put a custom look and feel on top of the ADF Phasers Java Server Phasers component set. First of all, what is skinning? Like so many technologies that are based on HTML rendering, ADF Faces allows developers to use Stylesheet to define a specific color coding or the width and the size information of a component on a screen. Developers that work with skinning change styles, they can change icons, and they can change the text of an ADF Faces component, replacing the full label with a custom label. Skins don't directly work against the generated HTML. Instead, a skin defines the layout or the look and feel for an area of a component. Keep in mind that ADF Faces components are a lot more complex than a normal HTML component. And in fact, a table in ADF Faces is a combination of nested elements that represent a table, a rich table at runtime. If you build your custom skins, and we will see that in the course of this presentation, then a skin consists of a stylesheet file, of images, and if you want, optionally on localized strings replacing the default labels. Let's start the application. This is the front end of the application that we want to skin or put a different layout to and as it only has an image so let's log in the default look and feel that you get in Oracle ADF faces is the fusion skin. The fusion skin is a bluish skin, grayish thing that provides you a nice little user interface that I would think might be close to what you like but not necessarily what your corporate look and feel is. Now to achieve a corporate look and feel you could use skinning and here I do have a selector that allows me to see what skins I have configured within my application. Now one skin that you find within the ADF Faces component sample is called Princess Skin. If I select this skin, then at runtime the stylesheet classes that I use to skin my application are changed and after redirect I can have this application running with a completely different look and feel though you still see that the components that are used are exactly the same so we're not changing any component in here all that we do is we change the component representation which in IDF uh, faces is handled by the component renderer as it is in all Java server faces components this is a look and feel that we had in previous releases for Oracle JDeveloper and as you see the components never change all that changes is the look and feel that I apply to that. Now in the remaining of this presentation what we want to do is we want to see how that could be done and how you could build your own custom look and feel with this technology. In addition we also want to look at what you need to do to dynamically switch skins and explore the skins that you have it available. Let's move on. So let's first talk about the use of Stylesheet in ADF Faces. Well, every component, every Java Server Faces component, of course, can have inline Stylesheet. If you worked with Java Server Faces components, not necessarily ADF Faces, then you might have seen the style class and the inline style properties of a component. Now this would allow you to put style sheet directly on it. One thing you see in addition in ADF faces is a property called content style. Now and this has a reason within the complexity of the ADF faces components. 
If you style a component with inline style, then it attempts to style the top root component, which could be a wrapper around the real component. In our case, for instance, a text component is very complex because a text component has a label and it has an input text field. Now, this is grouped by a diff element, maybe. Now, if you style this with an inline style property, you would exactly style the diff element. Now, to do this, uh, to style the real thing, to style the, the box, the input text box, you would use content style because the content of the component is what you want to style. And this allows you to control the width of, of the control. It allows you to do a border around the box and so on. And you see a list of components that have that, including the shuttle list boxes, input components. They all have content style. Of course, you could use inline style and style classes. But as said, they're just styling on the top level. Sometimes that's exactly what you want to do. I guess in many times it's not what you want to do. The style class property can be used with skinning in addition, so keep that in mind. Because if you want to skin individual components on a page, like you have two panel boxes on a page and you was want to style just one of them, then style class could give you a namespace, a little identifier that you can put onto a specific panel box that you want to style. But beside of this, if you don't want to use um, skinning at all, then style class, inline style, and content style is what you can work with. Using content style and inline style would allow you, for instance, to do conditional formatting, as we see on this page. Now, in the celery column, what we have is this table cell, the column cell for celery, is rendered by panel label and message, so it fills up the whole space. And then we put the background image based on an expression language that evaluates the salary. And then you can see here the rules are mentioned on the slides, after which the background is green, red, or orange. So this is what you can do with inline style pretty quickly. And if it's just all that you need to do, just have a quick conditional formatting, then for sure using direct style sheet in IDF faces might be the easiest way to go. But if you want to put a full custom look and feel. If you want to have your application no longer look like Oracle, but like your corporate look and feel, then there's a bit more required than that. Then you have to go to skinning. Now, skinning, as said, is just a formalized way to use Stylesheet and to apply Stylesheet onto ADF Faces components. So the component developer knows his or her component the best. So they make sure that specific areas of the component as they get generated in HTML are marked with style classes. And these style classes that we generate at runtime are represented through skin selectors at design time. So how does skinning work? Well, first of all, when you run an application the first time, it generates the style sheet. Yeah? So we do have a style sheet file at design time, but this gets generated for as a specific style sheet, as a browser specific style sheet at runtime. The skinning framework transforms skin selectors, and skin selectors are not necessarily the HTML selectors that you know from Stylesheet if you're familiar with that. It transforms skin selector definitions into style classes, and at runtime these style classes are looked up by the browsers, and they're referenced from the external Stylesheet file that you prepare and that gets generated. Every component as we build it, every 150 plus component that we have in ADF Faces, uses a renderer, an external class, to define its look and feel at runtime. Now, this renderer class also defines the hooks that it looks up at runtime to apply a look and feel. And these hooks are called the skin selectors. On the last line on this slide, what you see is a skin selector called AF colon input text double colon label. Now, this skin selector skins the label portion of an input text field. Next to it, you see the generated uncompressed style class name, AF underline input text underline label. Of course, at runtime, you won't see this that way because we obfuscate the names, so you would see something like X25 
x27 because we reduce automatically reduce the size and the um, the page size that a comp um, component skinning takes at runtime to make sure that the performance is not impacted. Now, what's the difference between skinning and stylesheet that you directly apply to an HTML page? Well, if you use directly stylesheet, then you work against the generated HTML markup, like a paragraph, as we see it here on the first line of the page. So you can style a paragraph in HTML by just applying a, a color to it or a size to it. But this doesn't precisely point to a specific component, it would just um, skin every paragraph element on the page. Now, in skinning, you would use a selector that is specific for a component, like AF input text as a component in ADF faces. And there, you see the skin selectors, AF with a vertical line at design time, AF vertical line input text, and there you apply color red. Now, in this case, this information would be applied to the outermost component rendering the text input field. So that will put a color onto the label. Yeah? So if you wanted to put that onto the contents on the text that the user enters into the input text field, then you would use a more precise skin selector, AF input text content. You can use pseudo elements within HTML and you can do so within ADF faces as well. Now, in HTML, if you want to have the first line within the paragraph style, then as you can see here, you have P colon first line defining the pseudo class. And the same exists in ADF faces. So we are not so different from using straight style sheet. And if you're familiar with style sheet, if you have a good background in styling HTML pages, then getting from HTML styling to ADF faces styling is just like learning about the skin selectors, which of course there are many, but there are ways to discover them. Now, I mentioned that skins exist not only from style, or style sheets, so there's a configuration file called Trinidad Skins. As mentioned, Trinidad is the base of ADF Faces components, so we use the configuration file here, Trinidad Skins. Now that allows you to define more than just one skin, and as you could see in my sample that I showed in the beginning, I had a list of skins that I could switch between, and each of the skins had an entry in the Trinidad Skins file, and from there I could discover the skins, and I can switch the skins. The Trinidad Skins XML file has to be in the web inf directory of your application so that it can be picked up and looked up at runtime. The trinidad.config file has an entry of the current active skin. Now this could be a static information as we will see in the next slide or it could be dynamic. Yeah? So you could use expression language to reference the skin that you want to show at the present which would allow customers or users of your applications to switch skins dynamically at runtime as they please. Or you just put the reference in their preference files so that whenever they come back to your application they get their custom look and feel. Now, how to build skins. Now it's where it's getting interesting. Um, first of all, there is a documentation. Now this documentation is on OTN. You find that on the developer guides um, where the development docs are in the API section. There is a document called ADF faces skin selector documentation and this skin selector documentation is a very long document and this has ordered by the components that we have plus some global skin selectors the selector names next to its usage and some description how to use it same for the label the constant so you want to start definitely having this bookmarked on your browser so that when you need to know about what is the skinning facility or the skinning capability of a component that you can easily look it up. Then you have a skin style sheet file where this is where all the styles go in. And the style sheet files must be stored under the web root, which is the public HTML file or the folder <coughs> of your application. Any sort of source like images or other um, CSS or whatever is required by your application needs to be accessible 
for the application as well. So most likely it has to be um, underneath the public HTML folder as well. So you start building a tree.skins file. It's not there by default, uh, not in this current release. In the next release we will have that. There will be a facility in the next release where you can say, okay, just build me a new skin and then we create everything that you need just for this release we're talking about JWeb 11G release 1 patch set 2 just for this release you will need to create the Trinity Guard skins manually which is an XML document and I'll show you what the content of that is then the Trinity Guard config file is there by default it has a skin family name entry which is called fusion so that we have the default fusion look and feel and the skin family name this value is what you change to get a new look and feel. The Trinidad Skins XML file needs to be either in the web inf directory, this is when it belongs to the application, or if you prefer to have the skin definitions within a jar file, then you create a meta inf directory for that. So here's a look at the Trinidad config file. Now as mentioned, this is in the web inf directory of your view layer project and it exists by default, so you don't have to create it. Two examples here, the static example where the name of the skin, in this case custom underline DE or it could be fusion or whatever uh, skin you want to see by default. Um, so at runtime this information will be looked up in the Trinidad skin um, configuration file. Yeah, So this kind of registry of skins. Or if you want to have it more dynamic as I did it in my presentation here, what you want to do is you want to go there and use expression language to point to a manage bean or to a memory space or memory attribute so that you can look up skins. The skin configuration elements in the Trinidad skins configuration file are several elements. So there's an ID element and a family name element. Now we know that the family name element is used to reference a skin at runtime. The ID is used for inheritance because a skin can inherit from another skin, which means that if you want to build your own skin, you don't have to start from scratch. You could just reference an existing skin. That could be a base skin of yours or that could be the Oracle Fusion skin or another skin that comes with the Oracle package. And to extend the skin, you use the extend stack. There's a render kit ID, which typically is unchanged, so it stays with the Oracle Apache Trinidad desktop for browser-based applications or with PDA if you have a mobile application. The style sheet name element points to the CSS file that contains the styling. And then optionally there's a bundle name element that points to a properties file or to a bundle file to a um, resource class of yours where you override the default labeling. So let's have a look into a completed Trinidad skin example. Now this is how a Trinidad skin entry looks like. What you see here is that the slides defined a new skin called Bluff Plus Rich Extended, which is just a name that you can make up as you please. So that could be my company, Rich Extended or whatever. This has an ID, which is exactly the same name as a family name, followed by a dot desktop for browser-based application, or .pda for mobile applications. This allows us to use two definitions of a skin for different devices. Yeah. Then there is a style sheet name. Well, this references a subdirectory of the public HTML directory that I created called skins and in there there's a bluff plus rich extended CSS file. It extends the Bluff plus Rich Desktop class, and this is one of the default Oracle look and feels. It's a default look and feel we had before uh, Patch Set 1 when we changed to Fusion, um, and it's still shipped with a product, and you can use that. And here you see also, as the last entry in this example, the bundle name points to a resource class. Now, this resource class just needs to be in the class path for the view of, uh, project, and in my case, it's called ADSC Resource Bundle, and in there, I just wanted to change one of the default labels. Now every component, every ADFaces component has its own default labels. Yeah, for instance, if you take a, a dialog, a dialog might have two buttons, OK or Cancel, uh, or just the OK button. Now what if 
OK should be submit. Now in this case you would override the default label. Yeah, that's the use case where you would use that. Let's have a look at the bundle example. So you create a bundle and so here I have a public class ADSC resource bundle which is my bundle name that I configured in the Trinidad.skins file and I'm extending the re list resource bundle. And all I have to do is just overwrite the component label that I want to change. Every component label that's not in here will be taken from the extended skin that I'm using. So in my case Bluff Plus if you use Fusion or if you have a base skin. So you don't have to put all labels in there if you're extending from an existing skin all the other labels will just follow. So in this case what I did is there's a dialog change that I did. So I changed the um, AF dialog OK string to OK in the full written word. Same for close which I just did a an explicit close and then I have a splash screen change so when your splash screens comes up usually it says loading you can change that message to hello and welcome as in my case but what you see is I'm using specific selectors for that now these selectors are listed in the skin documentation that I referred to before so if you go to the Oracle technology network or if you go to the Oracle website you go to documentation fusion documentation and then there you find API documents and the API documents there is a skin selector documentation and there you can look up all the labels and all the label selectors and then just build your own resource bundle. There are some rules um, that you can use first of all if we look into this gray area um, you see that there is a, an alias usage. Now alias are global selectors that you can apply to, to every component um, and some of the components and some renderers support alias and they document that. For instance, if you want to set the default font, you don't want to do that on all components. You just want to do that in one place and you would say default font should be Arial, yeah, whatever. But the point of this slide is that you have the ability to reference alias definitions within your style documents. So you see here there is an AF panel tab body and the AF panel tab body reuses the definition of an alias definition. The alias definition as I mentioned is a global skin selector that you create yourself. Some of them are pre-created and they are documented in the uh, API documentation but you can also create your own alias definitions. I could create my alias definition called Frank Nymphius Cologne alias and put some background color and images there and then I can reference my alias within my skin definitions using the TRU ref selector and then I could just point it to my alias. Now this allows me within my own skin building to reduce the size that the skin file has to a minimum and that I can reuse skin definitions. Yeah, If you know that the components your skin will all have a specific background color if they have one or if the hovering of a mouse or a component will change uh, specific colors. Now if this color is always the same you don't want to hard code this all the time so you want to just create it as an alias first and then reuse the alias there. Similar, there's an inhibit property coming from Trinidad that allows you to suppress the inheritance of a specific feature of a component. Now, what we see in the gray code area, there's an AF document tag, so we are skinning the whole document, and we are skinning the splash screen content, so the thing that you see first, by default it's a spinning O, so if you want to change that, then there's a splash screen content and two other selectors that allow you to do that. Now, first of all, what this does is it suppresses the default background image and the default repeating behavior of that image. And then it sets the border to transparent and the background color to transparent as well. Yeah? So it prevents the extended skin to rule what the background image is. So everything that you inherit from an existing skin that you don't want to have, if you just want to disable that, you can call tr-inhibit. 
So now let's get a bit deeper into skinning keys and what skinning keys are. Well, of course, skinning keys are skin selectors. There are different names for the same thing here. And they're used as a kind of an address of a component. Yeah, like you have an address of your house within a street, within a city, within a region of a country, right? So this is what skin selectors are doing. And then skin selectors do have the ability to identify the house that you're living in. Yeah, that could be a label, the content, or a behavior like when the field is read only, then I want to have a red background color, I want to have a gray background color. And this is what you can do with skin keys. So I can start off with the component name, and then whatever follows to the component name further um, qualifies the area that I want to skin, that I want to put a width on, or that I want to put a color on, or a background color on. Skin keys can only be used in the skinning style sheet file, so you can't really apply them within the page. So you have to create the external skin file for that. And that makes sense because the framework actually takes the skin definitions and transforms that into proper style sheet. There's some additional functionality that uh, you have available as a skinner. First of all, a browser is a browser, but a browser is not a browser. Right? There are differences in the browsers. If you work with IE or if you work with Firefox or with Chrome, you will always see some nice little differences in the look and feel, uh, mostly in, in borders. Yeah, So IE um, is very uh, famous for uh, having a bigger width on the border than, for instance, um, Firefox. Now, if you want to have a consistent look and feel across different browsers, then you could use the platform or the agent facility. Uh, it's an identifier, it's just a marker for the skinning framework to determine um, that additional styles need to be applied. So you could say, add agent, IE, and then you put the skin definition there. At runtime, this will be looked up by the skinning framework and they will identify, oh, this is IE that you're running on. Now this additional um, style sheet has to be applied on that. Same if if it's a Linux client, for instance. Yeah? So if you want to detect the operation system, if you want to re respond to the difference in the operation system, which could be mostly fonts that might exist on one operation system, not on the others, you can apply that as well. And you can change it through style sheets. Um, by looking at uh, what the platform is or what the agent is. Then there's the ability to look, look at the locale. So you can have skinning for specific locales. If there's a need for that, then you can do that. Um, on IE currently supported, there's a ref, uh, right to left reading pseudo class that would allow you to skin um, your look and feel for the right to left reading behavior, uh, in which case you might have different shapes of the boxes that apply to this change in the reading order. But this only works in our Internet Explorer. And then you can specify aliases um, that will allow you to reuse skin definitions, style definitions on your page. Here's an example on how to skin tree, especially as styling the expanded icon and the collapsed icon. You use normal style sheet for that, so there's nothing different from ordinary style sheet that we use here. The only difference is we use AF vertical line tree to identify the component that we want to skin and then we use a double colon with the area of that component that we want to skin. And In this case we just replace images to make this the tree look like we want to have it. Pretty straightforward and this would be the information in the style sheet class referenced by the Trinidad skins files. So let's have a look at the skin configuration file within um, JDeveloper. This is the example that we looked at before. On the view project, I do have a folder under the, the public HTML directory with two skin definitions. One is a custom skin definition and one is the, the princess definition that we saw before, which is uh, giving the uh, the pink look to the to the strings. And you see, it's referencing 
style classes that you can have in the um, style class definition of the component. And like here, you might have a combination of a style class and a component, which is a status indicator. Here's skinning of a decorative box, which is an element in ADF. You see it's using themes. This is just a, if you're an experienced style sheet developer, it's an attribute styling that it's using there. And this is the definition that makes this the princess file. Now let's look at the definition for princess. In my web info directory, I do have a tree that skins file. And here you see my definition of princess skin. So the idea is princesskin.desktop and I could make it up the way I like it because there's no rule for what the name it should be. The family name is the same as the desktop name so that's the only rule I, I'm following here. It extends simple desktop. It could also extend the Fusion desktop if Fusion is um, more closely to what I want to build. Whenever you extend a skin then what you actually do is you don't have to build your own custom style sheet for all the 150 plus components we have so you can just start building your custom skin component by component and here in the last entry we see the style sheet name so in the subdirectory of skins there's a princess.css file that I'm referencing here and then in the Trinidad config file in my case I'm using expression language so what I'm doing here is I'm saying okay the skin family name should look up the sessions code attribute skin family. If this is not null, then take the name, the string name you find in there. If it's null, I want to have a default skin selector called fusion. In this case, the skin selector would uh, take the fusion skin and it would look like the oracle look and feel. So that's for the configuration part that you do in JDeveloper. JDeveloper of course supports skin developers and the support we have so far is that we provide syntax help and syntax complete and we also point out errors as there are within your skin definition. This help is not enabled by default. To enable this you go in, in JDeveloper to the tools preference menu. Choose Tools, Preference, CSS Editor and check mark the checkbox. And then you close this and then you get the little help that I indicated there on the images. You see that if you start typing AF it shows you all the components. You continue typing with table. It shows you now what are the pseudo classes there. If you put a double colon there then you see that it shows you the areas of a component. And the same areas, everything that you see in those boxes is part of the St uh, skin selector documentation. Here you see the structure view or the structure window that uh, shows the different areas of a skin definition file. You can click on one of the entries there just to be pointed straight to the skin definition and at the button you see that there is a, an error message shown where one of the components or one of the selectors that I put in are not valid. So that is kind of pointed out to me as soon as I have the extension installed. Themes. I already mentioned themes as an attribute styling. Now the background of themes is that some of the components you probably will nest on a page. So you might have nested decorative boxes or you want to have nested panel stretch layouts. Now if these are all taking on the same skin then you wouldn't be able to dis distinguish between the one panel stretch layout and the other one that is embedded. And to help you with that, there is a property called theme. Theme by default can have a, def a defined set of names like dark, light, uh, medium, and that will just apply for the default look and feel that we provide shades, different uh, uh, toning of the colors. Yeah, And you can do the same within your skin de uh, development. You could say, I want to build a skin that just addresses the dark theme. So it changes the look and feel for a component of the dark theme. This gives you a lot more fine grain control over when the component will appear to look like what you want it to appear. 
Now, themes, keep that in mind. If you're an experienced style sheet developer, themes are applied as attributes styles. Yeah, so we're styling the attribute called theme on a component. Here is an example. I have a panel tapped, which is just a, a tap panel. And you see that when I skin this, and if I want to skin the dark theme, and I want to put a red font color on it, then I use AF vertical line panel tapped just to identify the component and then in, in brackets I put in theme equals dark or theme equals medium whatever but the name that I'm using there needs to be provided by the component I want to skin and you see in the property inspector on the right hand side the theme is set to dark yeah so this skin would now apply to that component and on the page itself you see there's an AF document and then theme is added as an attribute of the component, but at runtime it gets created in the generated HTML output as an attribute of the HTML component. This is for backward compatibility. So um, before we had themes in Jadeval, which is now the preferred way of doing so, uh, we had tonal styles. Now in this case, uh, tonal styles by default are disabled. So this is just for an information for people who come from an older version of ADF faces and that did actually rely on tonal styles. You can switch this on in the WebXML file. The rest of you who never worked with skinning before, uh, you don't have to bother about tonal style because they are um, obsolete, they are no longer used. Now we use themes. Now let's talk about some advanced topics. You've seen in my example in the beginning that I could switch between skins. Now, how did I do that? And how would you do that in your application? Well, first of all, I created a managed bean because somehow I need to tell my application that um, a user selected a new skin. And for this, I created a managed bean called the skin chooser and handler. And I put that uh, managed bean to session scope. And this is only because it needs to remember the, the state that I selected. Yeah, if um, I, I I'm not dependent on the the bean to keep the state uh, the state, then I could just put it into request scope. In my case, it's in session scope. The tree configuration file references a session attribute called skin family. In my live example, in my JDeveloper environment, you saw that I did a uh, check for null if the component is is null to avoid that I get a simple screen but a um, graceful default selection. Um, for space reasons, I just took that out on the slide here. And then there's the select one choice component, which also references for its default value the session scope attribute. And then I have a select item configuration pointing to the bean, to the managed bean. And what the managed bean then is doing, it's just like looking at my ADFaces component framework, trying to identify all the skins that are available. So you see it's accessing the ADF context. Then it's getting the session scope from there. And in the manage bean, it's then, first of all, when it loads in the constructor, it first of all puts a default skin name in there. Now, in my case, the default skin name is Fusion. Yeah. So this basically makes sure, in my case here, that no matter what, I always will have an attribute set in the session, which is why on the previous slide I don't necessarily need to have the null check because I made sure in the managed bean that there will never be man, uh, a null. So we will discover this in the um, in the JDeveloper IDE later on. Um, this is just the way how you would access <coughs> your framework to look into what skins you have available. Of course, you can uh, you can hard code the skin. So if you have a fixed number of skin names. You can just hard code these skin names in the select list um, and just show that one. But it's a lot more dynamic and more flexible if you read the existing skins directly from the framework. So here's my manage bean class, which I call skin manager. First of all, in the constructor, as on the slides, I did set a default value. 
And you also see I'm doing a null check in here because if there's a skin set then I don't want to overwrite that information. The skin choices are a list of select item. Select item is a component of JSF to populate lists. So what I'm doing is I'm going to my framework and telling it to give me a list or an iterator of all skin definitions it can find. Now this skin definition could be part of the product stack like the Oracle default look and fields. This skin definition could be part of my Trinidad skins definition file so it will pass that file but it could also that if I have my custom skin within a jar file then this if it's on the class path also will be looked up for the skin definition and it will return the skin name for that. And the remaining of this class is an action listener or a value change listener so when a new skin is selected I want to change the session scope attribute with a new skin family name and then I have to redirect it to itself because only after the redirect the new skin is applied. So and here's what it actually reads from my skin definition. You see my princess skin here and you also see my custom skin here. Now if I switch to my custom skin then what you see is nothing. Well the reason for this seeing nothing is because my custom skin currently is empty. Yeah, so I'm redirecting to my custom skin and you see it's completely empty. Yeah, it's nothing in here. And this is it extends the fusion skin but it doesn't have any style, style information there. But we are going to change that. So if we want to discover a skin and this is what I said we're going to change that now one way to build skins is to look up the skin definition another way is trying to discover the skin at runtime now what area of a component is rendered or defined by which skin selector now I could discover that at runtime and herefore there is a property I can set in the web XML file called disable content compression by default everything is obfuscated in uh, Oracle JDevelopment and ADF faces, which means we try to reduce the, the, the size that we need on a page uh, to style a component. Yeah, so we kind of obfuscate the name from this long skin selector name to a very shortened name. You can disable that content compression, after which you get a more meaningful name, which allows you to translate that name back to a valid skin selector. Personally, I prefer Firebug to look at my um, generated HTML output. In recent version of Internet Explorer there's an equivalent tool that allows you to inter introspect the, the DOM tree of the generated ADFAs component such that you can identify which style class is applied to which environment. Firebug, as said, is the, the tool of choice that I'm using. Plus there's another um, plugin for Firefox which is called the Web Developer Plugin. Now the web developer plugin allows you, and that's the, the point for this session, it allows you to change style sheets on a generated output in the browser and see the effect. And these two, Firebug and the web developer plugin, allow me to, um, to identify um, a specific area in my application. So let's have a look how that works. So coming back to my application, I have Firebug installed, so I open up Firebug. And the next step is to open up the web developer. This is what I have in the menus. Oh, it's under Tools, Web Developer, Style Sheet, and there I have Edit CSS. So this opens another editor. And this editing screen now shows all the style sheets I have defined on a page. Oh, you see after it refreshes. So I'm not I'm not really interested in, in all of these because I want to identify my style. So I just create some blank lines here. Now what I want to do is I want to skin my table that I have here. So in Firebug I choose this 
icon here that allows me now to look at the definition of a specific area on my screen and this is operating on the generated HTML already yeah so I want to see for instance how can I skin the table header yeah and when I when I select something in here what you can see here is an AF underline column underline column header cell content now this is a style class that is generated out of a skin selector that exists in the render kit. Now if the rendering or the style class is not set or has no associated style sheet then the rendering is just like the default. Now one thing I typically do first is just to, to see if my, my, my thinking is correct. I first add the style class just by copy and pasting the string and first thing I do is I apply display none. Well, you see, the table header, the column header is gone. Obviously, I picked the right class for that. Now I could start doing some cha changes. And it's always, or it's not really that you start um, doing skinning for all components at once. So typically you have one component after the other, yeah, which is why this approach, though it appears to be very cumbersome, in fact it's not. Um, because you just focus on one component, you look at the component, and then you try to derive what the skin selector for that could be. Or you can just look it up directly. But these two plugins give me the ability to do online editing of the color coding of my application. So I have a background color, uh, and I want to have an additional color. Oops. Okay, so I, I should be happy with that. So you, you get the idea. And now I copy this string that I created to the clipboard. All I do is I just copy that. And now I go back to JDeveloper. Now I go to my custom skin. And you see it's blank. It's It's empty because I'm just started to build it. My custom skin extends the fusion skin. That's the only reason why I do have a default look and feel. Now, I copy this in. And this needs to be translated back to a valid skin selector. First of all, skin selectors never start with a dot. So I can remove that. If you look at the skin selector documentation, the first element between the AF and the component name always is a vertical line. The next underline typically either is a colon or a double colon. If it's a component area that it's defined, it's a double colon. And you see that the syntax helps pops up automatically when I can verify if my assumption is correct. And this string you see here is my first skin selector I created. So when I run the application with this skin applied, then the column will always be, uh, the cell header will have a dark bluish background color with a color white for the font. Yeah. So and this is one way to start skinning your application. And my recommendation really is um, if you start building your own custom skin, try to find a skin that is as close as possible to what you want to build. And this is what you start with. Because this way you can develop your application and build your skins at the same time. And then component by component you look at what are the skin selectors for my component see and try to understand what they're doing and apply the skin or you go as I showed you before you get Firebug for Firefox or the equivalent in Internet Explorer and you get the web developer plugin and then online on the screen you start playing with the color so you see immediately what the effect of your uh, coding is and then you just transform it back but don't forget at the end once you're done with what you're doing to unset compression so here compression is disabled. Now we want to set this back to false before you get to production with your application. So that's, con that's concluding my presentation about th skinning. Uh, skinning is very technical as you could see. Uh, it's a technical topic. Um, it's not really a topic that designers are very pleased with but that's the way it works today. Uh, in a future release we are addressing 
the need for designers to have it m less technical and more intuitive. So we're working on a visual skin design time environment in which you just select the component and then uh, we show you what are the selectors for the component and you put your styles there and JDOFO will immediately show what the impact of your styling is. It will also make things easier like, um, because what I didn't explore in detail is that we do use images for um, rounded corners or rounded shapes that we have in our component stack and you would have to build custom versions of these images and to discover all this the new upcoming um, skin design time uh, does a fantastic job to simplify the task and that definitely will please uh, designers but actually today it's a technical topic and I hope that this session helped you to understand how you do it uh, gives you one or two hints of what could be useful for you to build your custom skin. I always suggest to start with a base skin. Even if you build your custom skin, yeah, always start with a base skin and then extend from your own base skin and that could extend from a defined or default skin definition. Anyway, OTN is your place to go shopping uh, if you want to have more information. Um, there are the developer guys have a link there, there are samples, there are discussion forums just in case you have questions um, regarding this session here, just post the question to the OTM forum for JDeveloper and we'll pick it up there. The home page for the ADF Insider, if you want to like to watch more uh, recordings like this and there is a specific site I'm running which is called the ADF Code Corner uh, where I provide more in detail hints and tips. Thanks for attending and hope that uh, that was useful and See you for the next ADF Insider.